Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today I'm going to discuss an issue that's really personal to me, whether I'm going to vaccinate my own nine and 11 year old boys. Let's look at the data together. According to the CDC, there have been over 1.9 million documented cases of COVID-19 in children ages five to 11 from March 2020 until October 10th, 2021. When the CDC randomly sampled blood from children aged five to 11 across the US, they estimated that about 38% of kids have had a COVID-19 infection previously. Over the last few months, the rate of hospitalization for kids ages five to 17 has been about one per 100,000 people, compared to eight people per 100,000 in people ages 50 to 64, and 14 people per 100,000 in people older than 65. And just to give y'all even more perspective, at the height of the pandemic in January 2021, that number was about 70 per 100,000 people for those aged 65 and older. And the number of kids hospitalized has remained fairly steady at about one per 100,000. And to put a hard number on that, of kids aged five to 11, there have been about 8,400 hospitalizations total. Of course, these numbers could always change with a new variant, but for now I am reassured by this data. And of those children that have been hospitalized, 68% of them were black or Hispanic and notably 38% had no underlying conditions. But when they did have underlying conditions, they were most commonly asthma and obesity. And over about a 12 month length of time from October 2020 to October 2021, there have been 66 COVID-19 deaths in kids aged five to 11. For comparison, the most common cause of death in this age group is accidents and unintentional injuries which sadly killed 969 kids aged 5 to 11 during the same time frame in 2019 when the data is more complete. And this is out of about 52 million children aged 5 to 11 in the United States. Well, what about MISC or multi-inflammatory syndrome in children? This is that strange syndrome that occurs about two to six weeks after a SARS-CoV-2 infection and it really isn't at all related to how mild or severe the initial case of COVID was. This syndrome is very serious and causes symptoms similar to sepsis. There have been about 5,200 cases of MISC in the United States, and the mean age is nine years old. Most cases, or about 2,300 cases, have occurred in patients five to 11 years of age. And of these cases in five to 11 year olds, nine of them have died. And unfortunately, once again, we're seeing most of these cases in black and Hispanic children. And while there's been conflicting data on kids' ability to transmit COVID to other people, we know for certain that there's at least some possibility of transmission to other people. This has been documented. We just don't know if it occurs as often and easily as adults. We also know that vaccination will cut down on transmission of COVID to others. But let's get to my one hesitation to vaccinating my boys immediately. And it's something called myocarditis. I've spoken about this before, but let me give y'all a quick update here as well. Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle that can cause chest pain, shortness of breath, and heart palpitations. This issue occurs in young adults, mostly young men, ages 16 to 19 after the second dose of the mRNA vaccines, like the ones from Pfizer and Moderna, but it is very rare. But the concern is that if really young kids get myocarditis, the long-term side effects could include issues with scarring, damage to the vascular lining, or rhythm abnormalities. We have even more data now, and one of the most updated studies about the incidence of myocarditis was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine in early October, 2021. They found that among all of the 2.5 million patients included in a large Israeli healthcare system who had received at least one dose of the Pfizer mRNA vaccine, the estimated incidence of myocarditis was 2.13 cases per 100,000 persons. But when you looked closer at the breakdown, the highest incidence was among male patients between the ages of 16 and 29 years and this incidence was about 11 young men per 100,000. 
which is still very, very low. And most of the cases were mild or moderate in severity. But the Israeli study did not include anyone younger than the age of 16, so we can't really know if the incidence would be higher in younger boys. This data seems to be in line with published data from the CDC in June 2021. They reported that there were six cases per 100,000 of myocarditis in male adolescents aged 12 to 17. And most people who developed myocarditis recovered very quickly. And I give you this data to show you that from what we know now, the incidence of myocarditis seems to be higher in the younger population of those that are currently vaccinated. But what about myocarditis seen with COVID infection? We know that this can occur. And in fact, a recent study showed that males aged 12 to 17 were most likely to develop myocarditis within three months of having a documented COVID infection at a rate of 450 cases per million infections versus 63 cases of myocarditis per million males of the same age following their second dose of a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. Once again, these numbers are so small, but one part of the data that I wish they had given more information on was children less than 12 that developed myocarditis. So I really have no concerns about vaccinating kids older than 12, but I just haven't gotten enough data on this specific issue for kids aged five to 11. The initial data the FDA used to grant the emergency use authorization for the Pfizer vaccine included safety data on about 4,500 children aged 5 to 11, divided into two cohorts of roughly equal size. The first group of about 1,500 children was followed for about two months after their second shot, and the second group of about 1,600 participants was followed for about two and a half weeks after the second shot. None of the children involved in Pfizer's clinical trial developed myocarditis. But that really was expected given the small size of the clinical trial and the rarity of these conditions. So to summarize, the longest amount of time any child aged 5 to 11 has been studied after their second dose is less than three months. So at this point, we all have questions to ask ourselves about how much risk you're comfortable with, who our children live with and interact with and whether they're high risk, what ethnicity your child is, and whether your child has obesity or asthma. If your five to 11 year old child lives with a high risk person, or your child is higher risk because of asthma or obesity or is black or Hispanic, then I would recommend vaccinating them now. But for me personally, we live together as a six person family unit without anyone that's high risk. We interact with my 67 year old dad very frequently but he's been triple vaccinated and is otherwise healthy. My nine and 11 year old boys are Caucasian and have no underlying health conditions. So at this point, I plan to wait. I want to see if there are any side effects like myocarditis that occur as more children are vaccinated and we have data specifically for patients aged five to 11 that are vaccinated with two doses of the Pfizer vaccine and I expect that in a few months, we will have this data. And at that point, I most likely will vaccinate my 11 year old in April, just before he turns 12, with a smaller pediatric dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. And then likely I'll follow suit with my nine year old in a few months as well. I want to stress to everyone that this is my personal opinion. I'm sharing my own personal thoughts and any decisions that I have. Each situation is so different so please discuss any decisions with your own pediatrician. Thanks for joining me.